Are you a Terraria casual? Looking for a guide to help you improve? Well, look no further. Welcome to the Casual Terrarian, where we'll do a guided playthrough filled with tips, tricks, and other information to help you with your own Terraria playthrough. So subscribe now so you won't miss the next episode of the Casual Terrarian. Last episode, we did lots of spelunking, built our first money farm, and even got a money throw from the Blood Moon. If you haven't watched it yet, make sure you check it out now. Today, let's build our herb garden, craft some potions maybe, and take down the Bee Queen. Perhaps we can explore a bit of the underworld too. So to start off, let's build a nice greenhouse over here so we can grow our own herbs. You don't need anything fancy. All you need are some platforms and clay pots. I'll be using glass platforms just for the whole greenhouse effect. Alright, the platforms are up. Now what we need are clay pots, which are made from clay blocks at the furnace. Clay blocks are quite abundant in forest biomes, just below the top surface of dirt. You can find lots of it just slightly below where you started. I'm also going to fill the holes back up with dirt so it looks nicer. But of course you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Alright, now with the clay pots, just place them on your platforms. Okay, now let's fill in the walls. Plants in clay pots will grow anywhere and don't need sunlight to grow. But I'm still gonna put glass walls since this is a greenhouse after all. Let me build a spiral staircase for decoration too, just for fun. That looks good. Let's fill in the walls. Oh wow, another blood moon. We've really got the money troll, so I'm just gonna ignore it completely. Alright guys, it's a bright sunny morning, and our greenhouse is looking pretty good. So, to grow your own herbs, what you need are herb seeds, which you can get by harvesting the respective herbs in the wild, or by opening herb bags. Just grab the seeds and plant them like this in the pots. So when you first plant them, the herbs take time to mature. After they've matured, you can pick them, but it's better to wait for them to be in bloom. When the herbs are in bloom, they will give a much higher yield of seed, allowing you to plant more herbs in the future. To tell whether the herbs are in bloom, just watch for a shiny effect. And if you harvest herbs using one of these, a staff of regrowth from the jungle, you can get a higher yield of both the herb and the seed, so try to get a staff of regrowth if you can. And just a progress report, we're actually up to more than one platinum from doing absolutely nothing at all. That's all thanks to the money farm we built last episode. Alright, now let me introduce potions to you. Potions are consumables that give special and interesting effects. There are lots and lots of potions out there, so try them if you have some. Potions aren't too necessary in a normal world playthrough, but they do make bosses much easier, and they are more of a must for an expert playthrough. To craft potions, what you need is an alchemy table, which you can find randomly in the dungeon. You can also simply craft a glass bottle and place it down like this. This also acts as a crafting station for potions. However, the alchemy table has a one-third chance of not consuming the potion ingredients. So the alchemy table lets you craft more potions with the same number of ingredients as compared to the glass bottle. So use the alchemy table if you can. Right, so to craft potions, you usually need a herb or a combination of herbs, some other items depending on the potion, and bottled water. Getting bottled water is quite easy actually. Just make some empty glass bottles at a furnace, then stand in a pool of water. You can then simply craft the bottled water. Feel free to explore the types of potions out there. Notable ones are the magic power and the mana regeneration potions, especially if you're using a magic weapon, and spelunker potions, which I showcased last episode. I'll go over the others when we make some for our boss fights in the future, but feel free to explore and try them out. Ah, some herbs are done. So let's use the Staff of Regrowth to harvest them. 
Alright, let's journey into the jungle to fight the bee queen. See these yellow things in the jungle? These are hives, and each hive lets you fight one natural bee queen. What I'm after is actually a bow that she drops. It's really effective against the wall of flesh. Alright, let me explain how to get in. These hive blocks release honey and have a chance to spawn bees when mined. So the whole hive usually has a pool of honey at the bottom too. So you should try to enter from the sides or the top. And if you can see, there's a bee larva here. If you break that, the bee queen spawns. So don't just recklessly mine your way inside, because your pickaxe might actually break it by accident. Alright, so all we need are two rows of platforms like this. Let's go. So, the bee queen starts off by rushing at you. Just jump out of the way, it's quite easy to dodge. After a while, she will float somewhere and shoot stingers at you. These are a lot harder to dodge, because you have to move slightly to the left or right as it shoots. She can also summon bees too, but with 400 health and meteor armor, it's not too difficult. Okay, she's gonna die. Nice, we did it! Alright, so we got a beekeeper, which is a sword that summons bees when he hits an enemy. A honeycomb, which is an accessory. A hive wand, which lets you place hive blocks. We got some beeswax as well, which is used to make the bee armor. And bee nades, which are good against the wall of flesh. Alright, let's hunt more for the bow. Oh nice, we got it! This is the bow I was talking about. The bee's knees. This bow changes wooden arrows to a straight stream of bees. The bees fly around to do more damage too after it hits. So let me show you that. See, look at that. The stream of bees do damage, and the bees fly around afterwards. It's a really good weapon. Alright, so now let's get some obsidian, which is necessary for mining hellstone in the underworld. Just direct a pool of water into some lava. When they mix, you get obsidian. So mine that up if you can. You will need quite a lot of it eventually. Alright, I've gathered some obsidian. Let me show you a trick to find sky islands. That's right, sky islands do exist in this game. Look at the map. Lots of the sky is actually hidden. So the trick to find Sky Islands quick are Gravitation Potions, which you can craft or find them in chests. So how it works is that once you drink it, if you press the up direction, which for most of us is the W key, you will flip gravity and start falling upwards instead. See? Fun, huh? So just flip once, fly all the way up while moving slightly to the left, and then once you reach the top, flip it again and start falling down. Make sure you flip again before you hit the ground, or you die to the immense fall damage. Oh look, we found a sky lake. So sky islands are either a lake or a house. The lake has special fish and crates, but nothing much. Alright, on the right side we found a house, finally. Ooh, a star fury. This is a sword that summons a star from above to hit enemies. It's not an auto-swing weapon though, so you have to keep clicking to swing the sword. This is a really good weapon for the start of the game, so if you find a gravitation potion early, you can try your luck with the sky houses. Alright, now that we're back, I want to build a elevator, which is just an elevator to the underworld. It's really easy to do. Just grab lots and lots of dynamite, then throw them down to make a straight path all the way down. Dynamite is much stronger than bombs. See, the explosion is huge. Alright, I've been at this for a while. It looks something like this now. Nice, huh? Let's mine some obsidian while we're at it too. Alright, I think we've done it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the underworld. There are lots of dangerous enemies here, so just be careful. So to start off, this is a shadow chest. You need a shadow key to unlock them. You can find them in dungeon chests. The lucky thing is, you only need one shadow key to unlock every single shadow chest out there. 
So that's a plus, I guess. So in this one, we got a magic weapon. And nothing else much, I guess. See that red thing out there? That's a Hellforge. It's an upgraded furnace, so collect them if you find some. You need it later on. Ah, this is a voodoo demon. It drops the guide voodoo doll. Be really careful with this one, because after you kill it, the doll just drops. If the doll drops in lava, the wall of flesh will spawn. So never ever kill the voodoo demon above lava. Well, nothing else here. We can't do much now. Let's go back. Next episode, I'll show you guys how to prepare for the underworld and how to mine Hellstone, which is used for the molten armor and the molten pickaxe, which you have to get if you don't have the reaver shark. I'll also show you how to fight the wall of flesh, and hopefully we can take it down in the next episode. So make sure you subscribe so you won't miss that episode of the Casual Terrarian. This has been Zuzukon Games. Buy casuals for casuals. Have a nice day and have a great week ahead. Bye bye.